G'day everyone and welcome to our Microsoft Teams for Remote Learning webinar um, with the Tasmanian Department of Education. My name is Troy Waller. I am a Microsoft Learning Delivery Specialist, which is just a fancy way of saying that I am a former teacher um, and a former primary teacher at that. So what I'd like to do with you today is I would like to take you through all the great things that you can do with um, Microsoft Teams for remote learning. Um, this is the first of a number of webinars, so we will um, certainly not answer all your questions today. We won't um, you know, hit every, cross every T or dot every I that you are maybe hoping, but we're certainly going to be starting something and starting something you know, really meaningful for you in terms of remote learning. So, oops, excuse me, um, I need to, find where I'm up to. There we go. So um, aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. This is our landing page for, for Microsoft Australia education and everything to do with remote learning. All right. So I just want to stress that that's a really good website for you to jump into because there's a lot of information for you there. Now, the slides and recordings and other information available to you from the TAS Department of Education is available by that link there. So you might want to write that down. That's tlc.education.tas.gov.au. So tlc.education.tas.gov.au. And you do need to have your um, uh, access via your um, TAS email address. All right, so that's how you're going to be able to access today's slides and recordings and lots of other information as well. Um, I'm going to bring Clara off the call because she's our Q&A person today. I'm going to let her introduce herself, what she normally does and what she's doing now in this sort of remote learning um, environment. How you going, Clara? Hi, Troy. Hello, everyone. My name is Clara. I'll be helping you in the Q&A section with any of your lingering questions and curiosities. Um, usually during my day to day, I'll be working um, from the Microsoft Store in Sydney, New South Wales. Um, but due to the recent changes um, and whilst everyone is working from home, I'm helping out Troy and any other of the um, states with delivering and supporting their um, webinars as well as their live events for education. Great, thanks for that, Clara. Now, um, when you hover your mouse over the screen, you're going to see um, there is a Q&A button um, and it's for text questions. So you can type your questions in. Clara will do her best to respond to those questions in real time. And from time to time, we might stop and, and field some of those questions directly to me. All right, so remember that, that uh, link there again, um, tlc.education.tas.gov. Au. So let's have a look at our agenda today. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look um, and get an overview of Microsoft 365 and Teams. We're going to do a, a Teams specific overview. We're going to look at setting up your class team approach to effective online meetings and also resources to help you get started. So this is our start page for Office, all right? So it's very easy to remember. It's just www.office.com or office.com. And so that's where you're going to go to get yourself started. Now, I'm sure that there are other ways that you've been given access to, um, to Office. There may be uh, links on other web pages and other internal TAS DOE pages, um, but definitely remember you can get into it straight through office.com. Now, when we sign in, we just use our, um, our TAS department email address and that will sign you in and you just use your regular um, email and regular password, the same one you'd use to check your email, etc. Um, and that will get you in to, to Office. All right, so let's get moving then. Let's have a look at the building blocks for remote learning because Office 365 and Microsoft 365 is an ecosystem. So while we're talking about Teams, we're also looking at its relationship to a whole heap of other apps. So Microsoft Teams is the hub for this ecosystem and bringing everything together into the one place. So this rich service allows all aspects of the teaching and learning experience to be met using the full suite provided by Microsoft, which has been made available to you by the TAS DOE, and it brings everything together into a shared workplace, excuse me, where students and teachers can chat, um, call, share files, work with learning apps, and yes, hold effective lessons remotely, which is most important to us at the moment. Teams delivers a unique end-to-end -end lesson experience that brings back the human element of face-to-face -face teaching while helping students stay focused before 
during and after the meeting. So when we look at this slide here, we see that, um, and I'm going to bring my, my little pointer up, but we can see that we've got course materials and management, right? So you see the common denominator here is Teams, um, but we're going to be using other apps like uh, OneNote and SharePoint. Then when we think about our video content, right, being able to share videos with our students, and that's a really important part of remote access. Um, and we can do that with Stream, Microsoft Stream, which is part of our 365 as well as Teams. But then when we're using Teams for our lesson streaming and also recording, we see that that also coordinates really well with Stream. Um, in terms of assessments and assignments, well, we're going to use a lot of things in 365, but definitely forms and also the, um, the features in OneNote, the assignment features in OneNote and Teams. Inclusive learning, which is going to be another one of our webinars coming up soon, but we can look at things like Immersive Reader and Office Lens and their um, integration with Teams. Um, and then we talk about analytics, right? So there is some basic analytics within Teams, so we can look at who's doing what within, within Teams. Um, quite a powerful tool as well. And then we can also create our, our cohorts, right? So we can create our classes um, and our student groups, etc., all with inside Teams. So as I said before, it's a hub, all right? So everything is connected. So it's the digital hub tailored to both collaborative work and collaborative learning, and especially, you know, when we look at a remote environment as well. So it brings the conversations, the meetings, the content, the apps and the assignments all together in a single place. So the first thing that we see is the ability to have video and voice calls. All right, that happens inside Teams. Our ability to chat, uh, whether that's through um, a, a transparent chat board or whether that's through private chats directly from teacher to teacher. Um, and then also the Teams themselves. All right, so we're going to certainly unpack that and see what that all means to us. Then we have our um, Office 365 apps, and so they are all brought into Teams. So the things that we know and love like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, etc., they all come inside our Teams experience. But we also have these third-party apps, apps that um, are made by other companies, not by Microsoft, and we've integrated those as well. So you can see we've got things like Wakelet, um, we've got things like Kahoot and YouTube and even Wikipedia as well. And then at the bottom there, we have the ability to um, submit assignments or sorry, make assignments to students and the students can submit it to us and it all happens inside Teams. So, so when we are creating our collaborative classrooms, we know that Microsoft Teams makes creating and manage, managing these collaborative classrooms really, really easy. So it helps us to stay organized with built-in OneNote class notebooks and it helps you to organize your content your way. So every class allows teachers to organize interactive lessons and deliver personalized learning right into Teams. And then we want to empower student voice with rich conversations, video and content so that rich persistent conversation experience in Teams makes learning more visible and to the entire class. We're using text, using video, using voice, using integrations like stream. Um, we can easily create and share content with those 365 apps and files that we talked before, talked about before. So class avatars, emojis and stickers allow teachers to harness the natural behaviours and for a fun and fluid learning experience. And those apps integrate into the classroom experience so teachers can quickly access the Office 365 apps they already use like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. So the thing about Teams, is it's free for education, but the department has already purchased subscriptions for everybody anyway. So there's a, a there's a free level, but the department has actually bought a, a higher level. So that way that you, you know you're going to get the best your students, you and your students, going to get the best out of that 365 experience. Okay, so, but it's right across devices. So we have a desktop app for Teams. So whether you're on a Windows machine, a Linux machine, or you're on an Apple machine, um, you're able to um, have a dedicated client on that on that laptop, um, and that's where you're going to get the best experience for Teams. All right. But at the same time, we do have um, iOS, that is phone and, and and iPad apps, and we have dedicated Android apps for Android tablets and Android phones as well. So you're going to get a different experience on those devices but they're still really, really cool. I use Teams all the time on my mobile phone. Um, you know, there's certain things like I'm doing a presentation now. I'm definitely going to want to be on a PC to do that. But other times when I want to check my messages or chat with someone or, um, you know, sometimes jump in into a video call as just a passive passive um, observer of that call, then the the um, the phone and the tablet app are, are enough. 
but we also have browser apps, right? So um, whether you're on the uh, Microsoft Edge, whether you're on Chrome, Safari, and even Firefox, you can still have a um, an experience across um, across that browser. But remembering the best experience is going to be on your Windows 10 device and um, and using um, the dedicated app. And I've just got the link there for you as well. But I'll show show you how to access. Um, the client a little bit later, but if you do want to get teams, aka.ms forward slash get teams, and that's how you're going to find it. But remembering it's easy and on your um, on your phone, you just go into your Google Play Store or your um, uh, Apple App Store and, and download it from there. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of our webinar and looking at how we could use teams in a remote learning environment. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about before. And before is where we create the class team and we schedule our online class or lecture. So Teams is going to support your lessons by bringing everything the class needs for a meeting into one place. Teams is going to deliver that unique end to end experience that brings that human element of face to face interaction back while helping students stay focused before, during and after the lesson. So before, as I said, to ensure the lesson's productive, students can prepare ahead of time, as can we teachers. Students can review the previous content and engagements and, and collaborate on documents. Now during, we're going to present the contents to students, we're going to record our lesson for later viewing, and we're going to manage our conversations and questions. So once the lesson begins, teachers can use a variety of features that help focus attention and drive engagement and foster inclusion, such as high fidelity audio and video, live captioning, translation, co-authoring of apps, digital whiteboards, and distraction-free backgrounds. And for what it's worth, some of those are being rolled out now and there's some really, really cool ones that you can use. In terms of after the lesson, we want to access our lesson recordings. We want to view the responses to the conversations in our transparent chat spaces. And we want to continue that, that conversation with the students, right, on documents and learning materials. So all the content, including the recording, the chat, the notes, the digital whiteboard, the files, they're saved in a persistent conversation that helps the class continue the discussion. Nothing gets lost in the cracks. And hopefully you're going to find that no student needs to get lost in the cracks either. So let's talk about before. All right, so we're going to create our class team and then we're going to schedule our online class or lecture and it's really, really easy to do. So when we create our virtual class space, when we create our team, there's a few things we need to remember. First of all, Microsoft Teams can support up to 5,000 members of a team. Second thing is students can't leave a team. If they've been if they've been joined into a team, they can't just leave a team. Um, and the invite is is um, excuse me, it's invite only, and the team is hidden from others. So no one can accidentally stumble across your team and and join in, whether they're inside the department or outside. And there is a class materials folder which is read only. A couple of things I want to stress that whilst the team can hold five thousand students, the assignments and class notebook feature only contains a maximum of 200 students, right? So in essence, if we're going to use a class notebook and we're going to use things like, you know, the video chat and the assignments and the class notebook, we really need to think that a team has the ability to really hold 200 effectively. 5,000 can be members of the team, but really only 200 for that one note in class notebook. But for most of us, in terms of our classes, 200 is, is certainly adequate. All right, now when we create a team, we have four different teams that we can create. I'm going to take in and show this to you a little bit later. You've got um, the other team, you've got the staff team, and you've got the professional learning community team. Now, we will talk about those in later webinars, but what we're looking at today is we're looking at the class team, okay? So when we're adding students to the class, we need to create the team. We need to bring our students together into that virtual space, and we do that through using an invite link, OK, so we can send students an invite link by email or some other means, and then they can click on that and join the team. We could also give them a join code, right? And that'll come clear to you in a moment, but it's just a really simple code. Students access that code um, to access the team, and you can um, delete that code after a period of time. You can also add existing distribution groups, and the long-term goal, what we really want to see is we want to see these class teams and memberships all automated by IT using student information system data, all right? But if that's not in place for you yet, it's fine. You can do it on a self-managed level with the invite links, the join codes, and the distribution groups. 
Now, as I said, we're going to make these slides available to you. So I think it's really important that I um, that I let you know that this slide is a really good one for you as a reference, right? So you may want to print this off and stick it on your wall or stick it next to your computer at home because um, it'll help you at um, being able to access um, and, and know where things are. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you through. I'm going to take you through a little bit of the anatomy of teams. Um, then we're going to create that team and I'm going to show you some of the other functions and some of the cool things that you can do. So have a look here with me. So I'm in my browser now. Now I'm not using the dedicated client because I'm using the client to present this webinar, right? So I can't use it to, to present and demo, but you can see here I can have it open in the browser at the same time, which is kind of nice. So when I come into Teams, you can see here that these are the teams that I am a member of, all right? But up here, I've got the ability to join or create a team. Now, that's really important for you because you're probably going to want to, hopefully, create your own team for your students. So I'm going to create a team really quickly, but then I'm going to take you back into this team, which is one that I've sort of prepared earlier. So clicking on that Join button, you can see here I've actually got three teams that are not hidden. So someone has created those and they haven't hidden them, um, which means that everyone can see them. But you don't need to worry about that because when you create a class team, they're automatically hidden. Now, this is where if I had a code, I would throw in my, my code and I would automatically be joined into whatever teams that someone else has already created and invited me to. But for us as teachers, we want to obviously create a team. So let's click on that Create Team button and look what happens. We get four different teams that we can choose. Now, remember I told you we'll, we'll come back to what these ones are at another time, but we're looking at creating a class team today. So it's really simple. We just click on that and then we get to name the team. All right, now it's really important to think about your naming conventions because you, after this whole COVID-19 thing's um, over, you may want to uh, keep using your team or, or next year you may want to create another team. So my suggestion is come up with a unique name, right? And probably the easiest is just think about the year and then perhaps your class, um, you know, maybe your school name or just your class team, right? So for example, it might be 2020 um, grade three, um, and I'm going to 3W because my name's Walla, so that might be my, my team there, 2023W. Um, don't make it too long and, and confuse the kids, um, but just but do make it something that you know you can use it, um, sorry, you can adapt for ongoing years. Now, creating this team, I can create it from an existing team if I've got other teams and I, I want to bring all that content across, I can do that, but in this case, I'm just going to create a brand new team. So you can see there that it's whipping up that team for me. All right, and it asks me, do I want to invite my students? Now, here's where I can start to type my students' names, right? So, for example, if I'm looking for, here's one of my students, I can add him, okay? And then I might have another student, her name's Megan, I can add her, and bang, 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 I can add all my students very easily like that. And then I can also add teachers. So adding students will bring them in with one level of status, bringing them in as teachers, will bring them in as co-owners of the team, meaning they have the same, the same status as I do and the same controls, etc. All right, now you might have a distribution list in your school where you can just add your whole class at once. Um, up to you how you're going to do that. My suggestion though is as much as I've just shown you this, don't add your students until your team is ready or they will get an email announcement inviting them to a team that you're not ready for them to access yet. All right, so you, while you may be ready to add teachers, probably not adding students at this stage, but showing you that's how you do it anyway. So let's skip over that stage and look at that. There's our team, all right? It's come up really quickly and really easily. Now, what I can do is I can change my icon here. All right, so I'm gonna click on that. And you can see I've got a whole heap of different icons, primary, secondary, post-secondary. So I'm gonna go into secondary and let's go down to um, let's go to this one, pretend it's a biology lesson, all right, or biology team, um, and then I can I can add that, that icon like that, all right? So um, I'm going to jump out of this team, and I want to show you it's really easy to manage teams. It's all about self-service. Look what I do. If this is a team that I don't want, which is the one I just created, um, I can click on these little ellipses here, and I can delete the team because I'm the owner. All right, so don't have to worry about, you know, setting up teams and, you know, what happens if I make a mistake? That's fine. Just wipe it and start again. OK, all right. So let's go into this team here, which is one that I said I've already created. All right. Now you can see here inside my team, 
um, I have got, when I come into Teams, I've got, first of all, an activity tab. All right, now the activity tab is really important. Those of you that are on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and stuff, you know when you get your notifications, it's the same within Teams. So what, what we've done at Microsoft is we've taken that sort of social media-esque style of, of relating to each other and communicating. We've brought that into a work or into an education context, all right? So it's locked down, it's not public, all right, but it still imitates that sort of social media. So when I click here on my activity tab, you can see here's all my, my latest um, activity notifications and past activity notifications as well. So if I click on those, it'll take me in. I have the ability to have a private chat. Private chats um, are for me, for you as teachers to teachers. They're not available for you as teachers to students and not available as student to student, all right? But that's private chats. And that's gonna be very different to um, the, the more public chats, which we'll have a look at later. I can go in and again, see all my teams, all right? So all my teams live here. Um, and I can choose which one I want. I've got the assignments tab. I'll make that will come more clear to you later. I'll make more sense of that to you, but this is gonna show all my assignments across my teams, whether I'm a student or a teacher. I've got my calendar where I can schedule events. Um, I've got the ability to, to make calls and I've also got the ability to access my own OneDrive files, okay? All within Teams. So I don't have to go outside of Teams to be accessing OneDrive. So those are my side tabs. Now my tabs at the top are a little bit different. So you can see here, I've got posts, files, class notebook, assignments, grades, insights, there's lots going on. And look at this, I can actually add more if I want to, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. So having a look at the top here, we see that I've got a posts tab, all right? So posts is for the conversation. All right, so this is where I can have, just like on social media, I can have public conversations with everybody that's a member of my team. Now I did forget, I'm sorry, I should have shown you first that we've got these things over here called channels. All right, now channels are really important because each one of these channels is its own little domain. Um, in, this, in this context here, because it's a class team, these are all the different subjects in this grade six team. All right. Now you may set this up if you're in secondary, you may actually set it up that this is an English team and these may be unit topics, right? It's entirely up to you how you want to set it up. But each one of these channels has posts and files and the, and the ability to add even more. Let me show you. I'll come into the Chinese one here. All right. So this is my Chinese channel and you can see I've got posts, files, notes, and the ability to add more tabs. All right. So the general channel is a channel that I cannot delete, cannot change. Every team starts with a general channel. But all these other channels here, I can easily add channels. So let's add a new channel to this one today. Let's let's make a PE channel. So let's imagine that our PE class needs its own channel. You have a look at this. It's just gonna throw, and there it is, okay? So now we have a PE channel. And the PE channel has its own posts, has its own files, its notes, and spaces for other things as well. But I'm going to take us back into the general channel because that's where I want to demonstrate posts. So posts is where we have a conversation. You can see down the bottom here, all right, I have the ability to format my posts. I can attach files. I've got emojis. I've got animated GIFs. I've got stickers. And I can even hold a video chat, call a video chat spontaneously right inside there as well. Now, when I say hi to people, like I could say, hi class, I hope you're well. Bang, I hit enter and there it is. Now everybody that's a member of that team gets to see that chat, right? So the point of this is it's transparent. It's not about private chats. It's about everybody seeing what everybody else is doing. Okay, so th that's what happens in the posts. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can create an announcement, right? So I can easily create an announcement by clicking on the format, changing this into an announcement, and then I can choose my colors or illustrations, etc., and I can throw a, a, a big announcement and everyone will get a notification. I wanna show you one I did in the Chinese one, right? So look at this for a, for a cool one. Chinese lunch is provided today for our class. So I would imagine that has to be delivered by Uber Eats in this remote environment, but there it is, all right? So you can make those sort of announcements, okay? Which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing is we've got our files tab as well. So the files tab is where all my files live. So in the general channel, I have a class materials folder, which is 
read only access for students, but I as a teacher get read and write access. All right. So inside here, I can create folders, brand new Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, all that kind of stuff can all be created inside here. I'm not having to go outside of Teams. I can if I want, but I don't need to. All right. So that's what the files um, tab looks like. It's just where I keep all my all my files. The other thing we've got in here is class notebook. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that. So anyone who knows OneNote class notebook will know it's a very powerful tool. Um, it's a very powerful tool for helping organize your class and also communicating with your with your class. Um, and so it's not Teams or class notebook. It's Teams and class notebook. So we're going to have another webinar all about the power of class notebook, but I want to show you that it lives inside here. Um, you've got your collaboration space, you've got your content library, you've got your student sections, etc. Um, I can open that in the browser, but I can also open it in the app. So if you're used to using um, OneNote 2016 or OneNote for Windows 10 or OneNote for Mac, even though the, the OneNote class notebook lives inside Teams, you can still use it and the full features of the app that you know and love. All right, and if this is looking a bit small, that's okay. You can maximize that by hitting that expand button there and you're gonna get a lot more working room in there as well. Now, I told you before about creating channels and I showed you that I could create uh, PE, for example, um, but I wanna show you what happens if I come into something like, let's go into literacy, okay? And let's say in this grade six channel, I want to throw in um, this uh, adjectives Web, web page, right, which is from the ABC. Um, and I want to make this available to my students. I don't want them to have to find it and, you know, be sharing links with them, etc. So what I do is I just grab that link, all right, and then I come back in here into my literacy channel, and then I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to, this is where I can add all my different apps, right? So I can add things like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and you can see all these third-party apps as well. Some of these are subscription-based, some of them are free, but you can add, add a lot of, lot of stuff that you know and love. But I'm going to add a website because anything that's got a website, anything that's got a web page can be used through the web portal. So this is my adjectives, um, let's call the adjectives session, okay? And then I'm going to paste my link in here. All right, now, do I want a, a, a channel? Uh, sorry, do I want a tab to be posted in the channel? In this case, I do, and I click save. Now, you look what happens here. Now, what happens is inside Teams, that web page is now available to the students without having to jump out and find it. Like I said, sending links and all that. Student can still open it outside of Teams if they want, but I, as a teacher, could make a, a series of these of these links across the top. All right, and then if at the end of that lesson, if I want to change that, if I want to make it um, a new one, or even I just want to get rid of it, it's really easy. I just remove it like that and it's gone. All right. So there's nothing permanent about this it, it's, or static. It's very dynamic. Now, the other thing that I might want to do is I might want to bring in something like Canvas or some of my other resources into my team space for my students. Right. So I'm just going to do this as a random one. So remember, Canvas has a um, a, uh, a web portal, as does much. So you can see here, this is the learning at home um, page from um, the TAS DOE. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to grab that link. And this could be any web page, remember, but I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pop that in as a website tab. And this could be our, you know, some sort of Canvas start page that we've got. So I'm just going to pretend that it is Canvas and I hit save. And there it is, it's sitting now inside the page. So when my students come into whatever channel they're in, they can click on posts, they can look at their files, they can access their class notebook, but any other links that I've got are accessible to them right from inside Teams. All right, so creating channels is really easy to do. All right, remember we just click our three dots, add a channel, and then um, we can create tabs across the top by clicking on this plus up here. Now, while I see this, I just want to remind you that this, when our web uh, Teams site is ready to go, our Teams our class team is ready to go, we can add members by just coming in here and clicking on that. All right, so that's how we set up our team. Now, I talked to you already about announcements. Announcements are very cool. So again, when you get these slides, I put this slide in here so that you can remember how to set up 
announcements. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about, though, is the assignments experience. All right. So because it's a class team, we have the ability to set assignments and we have the ability to submit as students submit assignments and then teachers can give feedback. It's got that sort of LMS-ish kind of flavor. All right. Um, you may want to continue using your assignments um, through Canvas, and that's 100% fine. You can do that. You don't have to use every single feature that's inside Teams. So please don't see this as a competition with your already existing Canvas experience because you could bring Canvas as a tab in here as well, whether you choose to use assignments or not. OK, so let's have a look at the assignments. I want to show you some of the assignments that I've already created. So when I click on the assignments tab, now I get this as a teacher, I get the ability to create assignments. Obviously, students wouldn't. They would only get to view their assignments. So when I click on create, I get two I get three choices, I should say. I can create an assignment, which is what we're going to look at in a moment. I can create a quiz using Microsoft Forms. And again, we're going to have another workshop all about using Microsoft Forms as an assessment tool. But I can also bring it from an already existing assignment, right? So that could be right from another class team or from this class team. It saves me having to you know, reinvent the wheel. But in this case, I'm going to show you what it looks like creating an assignment. So you can see here that when I get this new assignment, um, page come up. I could let's let's say we're going to set up uh, adjectives assignment. I could call it whatever I want. Now I can add tags, right? Categories. So you can see I've already got maths and social science. In this case, I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call it English. Okay. So that's just going to put a tag on it. Um, then I can put my instructions. Okay. So please, you know, open this, do that, whatever my instructions are. But I can also add resources. Now this is key because I can upload resources from my own OneDrive space and the kids will get a copy of that. Um, I can add class notebook pages. All right. So if I'm integrating this with class notebook, I may want to make a, you know, a class notebook page that I've made available to the students as a resource. I can throw in links. I can also create new template files for the student to use, right? So instead of uploading a Word document full of information, I can actually give every student a brand new Word document, which they could be using as a template for this assignment. And then I can also use make code, all right? So that's for uh, coding languages inside Minecraft and all that kind of stuff as well. I can also upload documents directly from my device. The other thing I can do is I can assign points. So this might be worth 50 points. Um, I can also add a rubric. Now I can import an existing rubric or I can um, create a brand new rubric, right? So you can see here, these are my existing ones. But in this case, I'm going to um, create one. So I would set the title, I would set the description, and then I would set my marking criteria, right? So I can rename those, you know, fair, good, bad, could become, um, you know, well done, whatever I want to call them. And then I've got my descriptors down here. So if you know anything about creating rubrics, you're going to know um, that this, this is a really cool tool. Um, I can also set the number of points per, per um, portion of the criteria as well. Um, then where do I want to assign it to? Which class? So I can have multiple classes. I can assign it to those multiple classes. And I can also decide whether it's going to go to all students or to my individual students. So I can differentiate in there as well. All right. When I finish that, I could assign it to the students. We're ready to go. Or I can save it because I'm not really quite ready to, to, for the students to have access to that just yet. So I'm going to discard that one because I want to show you one that I've created here already. So this is an Aboriginal culture assignment for this grade six class. Um, so if I want to edit that assignment, I'll show you what it looks like from the teacher's point of view. So there's the title, there's the, the, the tag already. The instructions are there watching a video. I've put links to the video. I've given the students a template. I've set um, the number of points, haven't created a rubric, and there is a due date. And I've also allowed this to be have late hand in. So even though there's a due date, they can still hand it in past the date. So I can turn that off and turn that on. Now, I want to show you what it looks like to the student. So the student comes in. Oops, excuse me. Student view. So the student comes in and the student gets to see um, what, you know, that, that's what it looks like to them, right? So they've got the instructions, they've got the link, and they've also got the template for them to move. OK, so that's how we set up those assignments. Now let's talk about during our lesson. All right, so we're going to um, present content to students. 
We're going to record our session for later viewing and we're going to manage conversations and questions. So because I'm demoing this and I'm already using my video, etc., cetera, to, to present to you, it's a little bit difficult for me to show you exactly what a video chat is going to look like. All right, but you can see on the screen there, we've got um, two by two and what's just been announced as well is three by three. So we can see four and nine students on the screen at once. And then all our other students will sit in little boxes along the bottom down here. And we can pin students so that way that they don't vanish, you know, they don't move around. But what happens is every time, if we don't pin them, every time a student speaks, they will come from the little boxes down the bottom here and become one of these four or nine up here. All right, so that's what that looks like. Now, I'm going to show you um, how to schedule a call um, and how, how we would invite our students, etc. So let me take you in and show you that now. So if I come back into my, let's come into my literacy channel and let's say I'm going to set up a, um, a call for, for students in the literacy channel, all right? So I want them to come in at a certain time and we're gonna talk about whatever it is we're gonna talk about, maybe adjectives or something. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come over to my calendar and you can see I could meet now, that is that I could just call a meeting then and there and everybody in the team would get a notification, but I'm gonna schedule it. So I click on new meeting and this is going to be our um, parts of speech lesson. That's what that's what I'm calling that one. You can call it whatever you want, of course. And I'm not going to add my required attendees because I'm going to add everybody that's a member of the team through that channel. OK, so here we are in 2026 G. I want it to come down here into the literacy channel. OK, I'm going to set the time. And let's make it for today, but let's make it at four o'clock. Um, I want it to go for one hour um, and this doesn't repeat and you can play around with all those sort of features in there. All right. And then I click send. Now what happens is that's going to appear in the channel and it's also going to appear if, if I've taught my students how to use OneNote, it's all uh, sorry, use Outlook. It's going to appear in their calendar. All right, so everybody that's a member of that team will automatically get um, an invite and they will get it dropped into their Outlook calendar, but they can also access it through here. So I'm gonna come back into my team. All right, now I'm here in the channel. You can see that the parts of speech lesson is scheduled for four o'clock. Now I want you to imagine that it is four o'clock and we're going to jump into that meeting. Um, I click on it and then I can click join down here or I can click join up here. And I'm going to allow that to happen. Now you're going to have to forgive me. I'm going to turn my mic and my camera off because I'm already using it um, to speak with you guys through this presentation. But what would happen is I'd turn my mic and camera on and I can turn them on and off. Okay. Um, and then I can also check on the participants and the people that I've invited to this chat. I can mute them. I can change their status. Um, I can also um, start my recording. Now I'm going to do that. I'm going to start the recording now. All right, and we'll see an, a little notification will come up there in a minute telling us that's right, that the recording has started. All right, now inside here, what I can do is I can um, um, look at my device settings. So if I'm having trouble with my sound or my speakers, uh, microphone, um, with my camera, that kind of thing can all be changed inside here. And um, I can also have meeting notes, all right? So we can start taking notes inside that meeting as well, which will be available to everybody afterwards. Now, I want you to imagine that I've got my nine kids on my screen and all my other kids along the bottom and I've just delivered a lesson and, um, you know, we've been, they're able to come off mute and talk to me and all that kind of stuff. But then at the end of that, I'm gonna stop that recording. Okay. So that recording's finished and now I'm going to stop the meeting. Now, even though, I'm going to say that was great. Thank you very much. Now, even though that meeting is over, remembering we held it here inside the channel. So that means the conversation can continue. All right. So um, I might say, did everyone 
understand that. Now, I might have asked that question, of course, to them um, using video, but nevertheless, um, we, I just want to show you that even though that video or even though that call has finished, the ability of students to, to collaborate and connect with each other still goes on. All right, so I can mute the students, as I said. Um, and also, when I was inside that video chat, um, and actually, I might just show you that again. Um, I'm going to rejoin that meeting. When I'm inside that video chat, um, even though that meeting is actually happening, I'm not locked out of Teams because I'm in a video call. So I want you to imagine the video calls happening over here. I can still go in and chat with other teachers, check my activity, do other things inside Teams. And the whole time my video is actually playing, my video meeting is playing up here. So I can see that at the same time. And then I can jump back in to that if I want. I can go and look at my assignments if I want, come back into my chat. So it's not about being locked into the video. It's the video and everything else. So I'm going to stop that there. Um, the other thing that I didn't show you is the ability to share screens as well. So I could actually share my screen if I've got a PowerPoint presentation or I want to show them what's going on in my screen. Very much like what you're seeing right now, you're actually seeing me moving around on my screen. Um, students can see that in real time as well. All right, let's keep going. So after the lesson, well, we want to be able to access that lesson recording. We want to view those responses to the conversations and we want to continue to chat and collaborate on documents and learning materials, right? So I talked to you a little bit about that a moment ago, but the video that, that we made is actually saved into Microsoft Stream and is deposited into the channel. Now, it's still probably processing there, but let's go back in and have a look inside the team. And we were inside the literacy channel, okay? And we can see there that that lesson um, is actually going to be dropped in as a recording into the channel. OK, so that will actually be dropped in there and we'll be able to access that when that's ready. Um, so what happens with that is, as I said, it's saved into stream. Um, it's automatically uploaded to the channel so the students can access it um, and you can access it. Students that weren't there can, can revisit or students that were there can actually use it as a reference. Um, automated, automated closed captions. So there are captions happening in that, um, in that chat. I have the ability to turn that on and I can get English captions in real time. There's also a searchable transcript as well. All right, so it's really, really cool, the stuff that you can do. Now, remembering coming back into that, I told you before, even though that meeting is over, I can continue to chat with my students. Um, they could ask me questions, etc. And after that initial video lesson, I might actually set them um, a document. For example, I, I might open up a Word document and let's call this adjectives. Right, and so this is not an assignment. This is just a document that I want them to work on and they can all come in here and work collaboratively, whether they're in groups, large groups, small groups, etc. And they get the full Word online, PowerPoint online, Excel online, OneNote online experience from inside Teams. OK. The next thing I want to share with you is the grade book all right so we looked at the conversations we looked at the files we looked at class notebook and assignments the next things i want to share with you is the grade book because after they have submitted that assignment i can give them feedback i can mark that assignment etc all right but the other thing i can do is i can look at my grade book and i can look at all my students and look, look at all their assignments and i can see their marks and i've got a cumulative total over here as well which is really good but i might want to look at one of my students in particular so if i was to click on his name it will actually bring me down into that just individual student view. So that sits inside my grade book as well. So you can see here I've got my um, uh, my student one and I can see his assignments. He's, there's a couple that he hasn't done. There's a couple that have been late and it's given me a bird's eye view of where he's at. And I can continue to give him feedback and open up that assignment. I could I could ask him to resubmit it. All kinds of really cool stuff that you can do inside here. Now, remembering if you're using Canvas and you're happy with Canvas's assignment features, please continue to use that. Um, but if you're looking for something um, and you're not using Canvas, then please feel free to jump in and play with that assignments feature in there. All right, now before I think I go on to next steps, I'm going to stop and I'm going to open up to see if Anna has got any specific questions so far. Oh, sorry, Clara, got your name wrong. So Clara, have we got any questions? You're on mute. 
Hi, Troy. Uh, no, not at, no, not at the moment. OK, cool. All right, so let's keep going then. So in terms of next steps, where do you go with this? Well, first of all, remote teaching and learning with Office 365. Remember I told you aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. That's our landing page. Please jump in and have a look at that. We've got Microsoft Teams answers at support.microsoft.com forward slash education and those online courses um, at education.microsoft.com. Now I do want to share with you this first. So just give me a moment and I'll open this up. This page here, support.office.com forward slash teams. This is a really good page for you to access because you can type your questions in um, and you can find documentation. Or you can also search it up via um, category. All right. So if you're wanting to look at how do I you know, play with teams and channels or how do I track the activity of, of people inside teams or um, how do I what do I do about files? You can look at those categories there or you can type your questions in there. All right. So that's the first one. Support.office.com forward slash teams. Second one is support.office.com forward slash education. So you can see here this is the education support page, not just about teams, but about other tools as well. But specifically, you can find Microsoft Teams answers. So this is not going to be how to use teams. This is going to be how to use teams in the school, how to use teams in the classroom. So looking at things like assignments and managing your classrooms and managing your teams, etc. OK, now the other thing I want to draw your attention to as we finish off is for you to get the slides and recordings. Again, there's that link there, tlc.education.tas.gov.au. And if you want to reach out to me, you can find me online. I am here on Twitter at Hujusaram. I am also on, excuse me, I'm also here on LinkedIn, aka.ms forward slash Troy W, or you can find me on Facebook um, ak.ms forward slash Troy FB or just search for me on LinkedIn, search for me on Facebook. I use this as a professional page, um, so you no know, pictures of cats and dogs, um, but you will find all the cool stuff that I find about, you know, remote learning and using these tools in a in a remote environment. I'll push those onto my page for you and you can access them. So um, unless we've got some questions, Clara, I think we're going to end it there. Hi, Troy. Yes, Hi, no, no questions. questions. No questions. OK, cool. Well, I'm guessing that's because we've done such a great job. Um, so again, remembering if you want to access these slides, um, let me take you back into where to find those. Um, there it is there, tlc.education.tas.gov.au and also the recordings. And if that's it for today, then that's it for today. So thanks very much, everyone. And we'll hopefully see you at the next webinar, which is coming up really soon.